Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at how we can create a raw stitched panorama file in Camera Raw 9.0. Now, prior to this release, we could create stitched panoramas. However, they would be rendered as pixel based images. Now, in Adobe Camera Raw 9.0, we can render those images as DNG files. So we can render beautiful panoramas with all of the editing flexibility that comes with Raw. So I'll start here in Bridge, and I'll select these four images to stitch together, and then click Open in Camera Raw. In the Film Strip area, I'll select all four images, and then use the drop-down menu here in order to merge to panorama. There are three different projection options to choose from. I'll start with the perspective option here. Perspective uses the image in the middle of the panorama as the reference image. To seamlessly match the rest of the images in the panorama, Camera Raw needs to reposition and stretch and skew the images on either side of the center image. And these transformations might produce a panorama that looks like a bow tie with the images at either side taller than the center image. If we try the cylindrical option, this option is going to be better suited for creating really wide panoramas. Again, Camera Raw is going to use the center image as that reference image. However, when it stitches the other images together, it matches this overlapping content as if each image was mapped on the inside of a cylinder, minimizing that kind of bow tie effect that you would get with the perspective option. The spherical option here aligns and transforms the multiple images as if they're mapped to the inside of a sphere. This method works best when creating 360 degree panoramas as well as multi row panoramas. So if you photograph, say, a grid of images both across as well as down especially if you're capturing with a short focal length lens like maybe a 24 millimeter. If you turn on auto crop, Camera Raw will automatically crop away any of the uneven white areas around the image. If you uncheck it, you might see those white areas. Either way, it really doesn't matter because any cropping that we do here is going to be non-destructive and we can change it when we return back to the Camera Raw dialog. As soon as I click Merge, and then save the image, we can see that that panorama is being built. We see it in the preview area, and we can start making our changes. What's important to know is that if you have spent time correcting each one of the individual images that are used to create the panorama, not all of those adjustments will actually come over to the stitched panorama. So what I would recommend is instead of investing your time manipulating the individual images, you merge the stitched image together and then make your changes to that. Because like I mentioned, this stitched panorama has all of the editing flexibility of any other raw file that you work with, and because we're using Camera Raw, it's all non-destructive. One thing I will point out is that when you're stitching together a panorama, under the hood, Lightroom will apply any lens correction profiles in order to get a better result. Let's go ahead and just make a few changes in the basic panel. I want to increase the temperature here just to warm it up a little bit, and I might increase my shadow area just so we can see into the shadows and bring down my highlights to reveal some detail in the clouds. I'll also scoot over here to my HSL panel. I want to decrease the blues here in the sky, so I'll move the slider a little bit to the left as far as desaturating them, then move over to luminosity and also decrease the blues here so that they get a little bit darker to add a little bit of color contrast in the image. Obviously, all of these changes are non-destructive, so if I change my mind at any time, I can come back to, say, the basic panel, just decrease the exposure a little, and then maybe increase the highlights. If I want to crop this image, I can select my crop tool and click and drag out anywhere in the image area in order to crop. I'll tap the return key, just like everything else that we do here, of course, it's non-destructive. And I'll just point out that these changes that I've made to this panorama image are not reflected in the other images here. So this panorama is a completely separate raw DNG file. It is not connected to the original exposures. 
Finally, two things to point out. There is a maximum size of 6,500 pixels on the long side or 512 megabytes, whichever comes first. And I'll go ahead and click Done so we can return back to Bridge. I just want to show you that you can use both of these new merge technologies in combination with one another. So here we can see that I have a number of different exposures. In fact, this is a panorama. It's an HDR panorama. So I've got three exposures of the first area of the panorama and then three more of the next area. And what I would do if I want to merge all of these together is that I would first select select each one of the three exposures of the same scene and run the new merge on that. And what I would get as a result would be these merged HDR images right here. And then I could select all of these HDR images and I can actually merge them as a panorama, which would then result in this single image here, which is an HDR panorama as a raw file directly from within Adobe Camera Raw 9.0. So there you have it, a great new way to create a panorama image in Camera Raw. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.